Bye. You guys like my microphone? It's like a little, uh, a little furry. So I made a video about um, biblical angels are four or five dimensional beings, right? We live in a three dimensional space, height, width, and depth. Four dimensionals is it adds time, and a fifth dimensional is time inverted plus the height, width, and depth. You know all that. Um, that's what the science community say, at least. The five six-dimensional beings are invisible to us because they're in a higher order, right? They're beyond our imagination. Even people would say, oh, like a hypercube is a four-dimensional uh, cube within a cube, and it's always inverted and all that. Like doing those videos, if you see like what a four-dimensional being looks like. You're looking at a, um, a, a shadow of a four-dimensional being in a two-dimensional screen in a three-dimensional world on a one-dimensional phone, right? So it's a, it's a paradox within a paradox. It really doesn't make sense to look at those videos and imagine like, oh man, it's a cube within a cube and it's a hyper fixated in this one superconductor. All the bullshit, right? A four or five-dimensional being is something that we can't imagine, right? So when the Bible talks about how the Nephilim were uh, fallen angels, right, that came down to earth, but they were in a four, in a three-dimensional body, but from a four-dimensional soul from hell, and it's like, why are they fucking raping, killing, murdering, doing black magic? All these things are like, it's weird. They give themselves like three-dimensional bodies, and they were like, literally like superheroes, flying, doing all these things. Uh, they were like. I don't know, probably like Superman, right? That's why Superman it has a symbol of the S for Satan, and he literally fell from Krypton, right? He's a Kryptonian, fell from heaven. He's a fallen angel, symbolizing the demonic world that was in the old world. So four-dimensional, five-dimensional being is unimaginable. We can't imagine it. And also in the Bible, it talks about how angels, uh, the seer's fin, are a ring within a ring there's a thousand rings and a thousand eyes and then there's another one but it's like a thousand wings with one big ol eye and each wing has a thousand eyes you're like what are what the hell are they describing like what is this thing you know and the idea is that these things are four or five dimensional beings and we can't imagine it and in the in a thousand years ago they're like a thousand rings a thousand eyes and we're like okay like everyone's like all the christians are like all right now we think the science community is talking about how a four or five dimensional being is unimaginable. And it's like, that's the Bible, what's in, that's what the Bible's been talking about for 2,000 years. Um, they can't describe consciousness. But meanwhile, it's part of the Trinity. The, the, the Holy Spirit is what gives you consciousness, right? And, then, and it says when you can be Christ-like, you have Jesus in you. The, God wrote a moral law within you. And uh, you are not conscious of it, it's in your subconscious. Uh, and that's why when you kill somebody, if you were to kill somebody or something, you, you feel guilty, right? So moral relativism is not real. You literally know what's right and wrong. You know that slavery is wrong. You know being racist is wrong. You know killing people is wrong. Even if you are a, a tribe in Africa or Brazil or somewhere in the middle of nowhere, never even heard of Jesus, when you're sacrificing yourself, when you're sacrificing your, your people to your sun god, you know that's wrong, but you're you're under a, a mass hypnosis. That's why the um, in the old world, like the, the the Mayans and the Aztecs, they were sacrificing themselves to the sun god, and they were all mushroomed out. And the regular civilians are like, "Why do we have to kill people? Why are we killing women and children?" And the the leaders of the tribes were like, "Because my sun god told me." And they're all like high and shit. All, their brains are all fried. And they went to like a different consciousness, right? They are demonically possessed, sorry. They're demonically possessed. So that's what happens when you do too many drugs. And I think that's what happens when you do weed and alcohol. You know, you, you, you enter into a different state of mind. You're, you enter into a new consciousness. Um, so the Bible has been right for all these years. Demon worshiping pedophiles on the world. Um, you know, four or five dimensional beings are the Nephilim or the, uh, the Seer's Fim and siphon put down below what they're called i always forget the name they are unimaginable to the human eye that's why every single time they pop up they say do not be afraid 137 times they appeared in front of a human in the bible every single time they say do not be afraid because our puny little minds can't comprehend um <clears throat> so i think these four or five dimensional beings are 
the Bible was far, far ahead of their time. Even when the Jesus was alive and he was saying, love your enemies, you know, um, like he was the number one person that represent women's rights. Jesus would say to a guy who was married and he's getting a divorce and he would say, I'm taking everything. I worked out for all this shit. I'm taking everything. And Jesus was like, how long were you married with her? Five years, 10 years? Okay, exactly. You need to give half your shit, even though yes, you worked. Even though you're the one who worked for it and she was just at home chilling. She was still, she was there with you when the, when the times were hard. You owe her half your shit. Now, that's not verbatim, right? It's just a, it's just a gist of it. I think, I don't know how to, I, I, have, I, have, I have horrible memory. Uh, wait, what were we just talking about? Oh yeah. So, you know, by the, in the Bible, Jesus was like the first one to represent women's rights. <clears throat> and a lot of people say like, oh, he's, he's misogynistic, he's racist. It's the Christians that are racist and misogynistic, okay? It's the people, okay? So, don't listen to people. Don't listen to the Christians, right? We can all do that. If you want to blame the Christians for being racist and misogynistic, we can all do that. I can, I can call out groups. Now, this is going to be hypocritical of me. I'm just saying an example. We can call out people, groups of people, that do A, B, A, B or C, that are statistically higher at committing crimes or doing this or doing that. Like my people, the Mexicans. Fucking most of them are in the cartel and shit. All of them raping, killing, murdering. And, <clears throat> I mean, if you're in the cartel and you're Mexican, and you're like, oh, wow, can you not be a stereotype, please? But when you're out of the cartel, and you're saying, you know, um, I love my family, I'm with one woman, I love my kids, I work my ass off, all these things, everybody loves you, no matter what your skin color is. Everyone's like, oh, he's, he's a good guy. Um, you know, so when people do that, you know, we can just, we can start people, we can call the people out. I've heard so many girls that grew up in the church and said, my dad was racist, my dad was sexist, my mom was sexist. Uh, and they get out of the church and never go back in the church and never believe in God. It's like you're blaming God for what your parents or flawed human parents did. Yes, they're wrong. And yes, they are hiding behind Christianity. You know, you go to the hospital, you see only sick people. Sick people. You know, you go to the church, you see broken people. You know, that's what you see. We're all walking, talking hypocrites. We can all play this game of you're sinning and your people did this and my people did that, you know. Um, that's the last thing we should do. You don't truly, if you're a girl or a guy that grew up in the church, got out of the church and say all Christians are racist and hypocrites, you don't have forgiveness in your heart. I know you've been hurt by Christians. I know you have been. And when you do that, you don't actually come from a, 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 a true, a truthful point of view. I came from atheism, a broken home, no church, no nothing. Um, drug, sex, and rock and roll, the whole thing. And I was a truth seeker. I had questions of why am I here? Why do I exist? What's the meaning of life? All those things. And it led me to Jesus. Um, so if you're like, I grew up really good in the church. I already heard about God. I don't need to hear it because all you Christians are hypocrites. It's like, okay, you don't have true forgiveness in your heart. That means we shouldn't listen to you because you still have trauma and you still have shit to go work through. Uh, so yeah, man, at four or five dimensional angels, that's what the Bible's been talking about for 4,000 years. Uh, so it, it's scary, man. It's scary to think that an angel is a warrior of Christ, and they are invisible to the human eye. But when they appear, when they want, when they when they appear in front of you, when they want you to see them, they have to say, "Do not be afraid," because they're the size of a building with four, like thousand rings and a thousand eyes. Our brains can't comprehend, and it scares us shitless. So, um, Christ is king ultimately, and I think. Um, you know, demons are the same thing. The de a demonic spirit. Well, that's why Lucifer, Luce, Luce, Spanish for the Spanish speakers, Luce, la luz, way, right? The light, a being of light, Lucifer. Uh, he is of God of awakening, of knowledge, of wisdom, all that. Well, there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom, but you know, of, of knowledge. Um, <clears throat> that's why, like a little baby, they're not killing themselves because they're oblivious, even though they know nothing, right? Um, and their babies, they're all about love, unconditional love. They don't care. But then you start becoming a teenager and all the teenagers are killing themselves because they gain the knowledge and how evil this world is and how horrible we all can be to each other. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's scary. To, it's dangerous to have 
a lot of knowledge, you know? That's why, what's the number one group of people that kill themselves? It's the atheists that are doctors. Doctors and dentists have the, have the most depressing jobs and the one, they're the ones that make the most. They're the ones that make the most and they have the most depressing jobs and they end up killing themselves, fucking dummies. Meanwhile, the plumbers and the guys who swim in shit, all the blue collar boys, all the certified dirty boys like me, all the truckers, all the construction workers, all the, all the electricians, dirty boys working with their hands, fucking stinky and ugly. We are not the ones who, we're happy as a dog and walking around like oblivious kids. We don't give a fuck. But you doctors, seven years in the fucking psyop, freaking demonic state in colleges, you guys end up killing yourselves? Dummies. And that's what happens when you have no God. That's what happens when you've been psyop. That's what happens when you believe too much in the government. That's what happens when you believe in worldly things. Look, even to me, I got a lot of Christians who love Trump, right? I like Trump too, but he, he's, a, a, he's a man at the end of the day. He went to, he went to Epstein's Island. He did, he was a gen, he degenerate gambler and sex addict and he's done some bad shit. Same with Andrew Tate. I like Andrew Tate, you know, he speaks facts. But he was a degenerate, you know, lied to women and manipulated women, controlled women. Who cares? Who cares about that? What he speaks about is the truth. Not Islam, of course, but everything else. We're being psyched. up. We're being lied to. All that stuff. Don't trust the government. Pick up, you know, pick yourself off the ground. Yes, the world sucks. Yes, it's depressing being a man. Yes, it's hard to be a man. But pick yourself up. All those things are 100% true. But these men are flawed. George Washington set the stones, set, set the foundation for the future generation, you know? Set set the, the, the idea of what an American is, 100%, mad respect, but he was probably a slave owner and probably misogynistic to women. It is what it is, including me. I mean, fuck, not including me, damn it. I meant, like, being a complicated man. Being a complicated man, that's what I meant, okay? Um, <clears throat> we're complicated, okay? It's part about being a human being. But, and you can handle it on your own, right? You can do things on your own. But when you, when, when, why is it that every person that goes to prison, goes to jail, does drugs, indulges in the dark arts, we get out and we believe that there's a higher power and there's something, we've been humbled in life, you know? That's why every UFC fighter is conservative, fundamentally conservative. Because they look at the competition and they think, man, this is gonna be a hard hill to climb. Like all these guys, number number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, all these guys in the top ten, in the top ten, they can all be champions. They can all beat me. They can all choke me out. They all hit hard. They're all fast. That being said, I'm still gonna go for it, right? That idea will fundamentally shape what kind of person you are. If you look at the competition, and say this is hard. This is you're not gonna make it. So that's what Andrew Tate talks about. Get your ass up. Get in there. Yes, it's hard. Yes, it's depressing. Yes, the world is run by demon origin pedophiles, dark arts, and cultists. Yes, women are whores out there. Yes, but you still got to get pull yourself up. 